I'm from the city of Chicago. I have seen um, Mr. Kelly's car at Kenwood High School. I, I, I've seen his car at the McDonald's. And who he pray on, who he prayed on was specific and he was very intentional Mm -hmm. and i'm going to say this that there is a mentality that comes with a survival mode when you're in survival you tend to compromise and you look for a way out Mm -hmm. i grew up in inglewood i grew up in a, um, a city where everybody was trying to find a way out and sometimes you will compromise and turn your head at something that is illegal, that is very, very, very um, egregious, um, and you will allow that to happen to someone if it's going to cause you um, to experience some type of status change. It mm-hmm. is, it is, it is a, a very weird, twisted mindset, perverted mindset that a lot of us have adopted because of where. The, I'm, I'm sorry, the environment that we grew up in. Mm. Um, and I believe that it was very intentional for him to pray on who he prayed upon. Definitely. And, and, and sometimes even in the mindsets of parents, children are used as pawns. And I'm not saying that they mm-hmm. u- use their children, but sometimes when you're trying to get out of where you are, yep. that mindset will cause you to sacrifice whosoever will so that your status would change. How do you feel about that, Kev? I think what you said was so powerful. I, I can't really even add to that, but you're absolutely <laughs> right. As you were speaking, brother, I mean, this is a wonderful conversation. This is the kind of conversation we need to have, yes. which is, you know, it makes me think about the passage in Malcolm X's autobiography, which I think people really need to reread periodically the way we read the Bible or the Quran, because Malcolm talks about when you're in that kind of environment that the brother just described very eloquently, it's like animals preying on each other. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I know plenty of R. Kelly's, and I also want to make it clear we should not act like our school sort of exception to the rule. I, I mean, when I graduated from high school, there were folks that I went to high school with who kept going back to the high school to try to pick up the young girls. They're Absolutely. like, wait a minute, man, you're 19, you're 20, <laughs> yeah, you're 25 exactly. years old, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But, what, but just like, but here's, what, here's my point, though. That's right. Here's what I'm saying. Just how we as black people, as African people, want white folks to be allies and challenge white people around white supremacy, around racism, Many of us men in the barbershop, in the churches, mm-hmm. in the masjid, in our communities, That's turn right. our heads when we say disrespectful stuff about women. When we see men preying on women or, or preying on girls, we don't say anything. And that's Absolutely. what I'm talking about. So it's actually a community issue that really is yeah, here. Right. R. Kelly is just a symptom of a bigger problem that's, that's a crisis in manhood in our communities, but also in America. And I would say this as a black man, and I say this when I work with brothers all over the country, I decided a long time ago I do not want my definition of black manhood to be a bootleg definition of white manhood, mm. which is based on materialism, violence, ego, sexism, patriarchy, disrespecting women, all, you know, all those kinds of things that we've actually, you know, one of the one sister said to me, one reason why Bill Cosby got in trouble is because he actually thought that he could do what white brothers could do. Mm-hmm. No, you can't. you can't. No, you can't. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. And you are, you are right. absolutely correct right. on that. My challenge is that we have adopted this I- I- identity, excuse me, that we have really become comfortable with, and it's okay for us to embrace this sense of perversion. And that's not a sexual word. Um, when you talk about perversion, it is it is it's going against the original purpose of a thing. And so, in the mindsets of a lot of us um, in our culture, uh, people of color, there's a sense of perverted thinking, um, and and I believe it needs to be interrupted with information revealing on who we really are. Mm. I think that I, I think that we will continue to perpetuate a behavior if we're not introduced to another level of identity r kelly existed in my family that type mm. i mean i yep. am i am a product of of one who was molested and it wasn't by a man but i, I don't care who you were molested by right. you were molested you were taken ad- advantage of and there's so much that happens in households in churches in mass and different things of that nature that we do not address. Yes. And you cannot experience change without proper education. Well, and so we sweep yeah. things under the rug and we become a product of our, um, excuse me, violation or our offense. And we grow up and we end up perpetuating mm-hmm. what was yes. done to us. Yes. Yes. And yes. so be- yes. because he was hurt, now mm-hmm. he's hurting people and no one ever grabbed him and interrupted what was done to him. 
and right. it d- developed a mindset, and now it becomes his norm. I mean, if you look at the timeline, that's very clear because even in the, in the documentary, when they were going over his childhood, they said that R. Kelly had been molested. Um, I I believe very close to his teen years, if not in his teen years as well. And then if you look at that timeline and match it up with when he became famous, there was not that much of a gap there. There was not really time for him to seek help or to to really get over that. And then when you become famous, we we briefly touched on accountability. Mm -hmm. If you watch the documentary, the number one thing that I pulled from that documentary is that nobody held him accountable. Everybody was a yes man. You, you know why? So, because he had money. Yes, and absolutely. So the money gave him in influence. It gave him power. And yep. he surrounded himself with people who needed money. Therefore, they needed him. Right. And they enabled him. That's it. Yeah. They enabled him. Listen, uh, anybody who has money and they hang around poverty, they will become an icon. Absolutely. Point blank, period. Oh, wow. Absolutely. And that's the drug dealer. That's the celebrity. Yep. That's Absolutely. The athlete, that's anybody. Absolutely. Yep. I want to hear. I want to hear what you have to say about this, Thin Bad, because uh, it's a little silent in your yeah. corner over there. I'm surprised. <laughs> well, no, because you, you all, is, you all are striking. I don't want to enter. You know, to, to jump in. You all are saying things. You know that that need to be said. But also the other piece that Kevin touched on too is about the patriarchy and this whole deal. The whole thing that we do. There was a time when, when, when the black male was the keeper of the community. Yeah. You know, the, the protector in, in the community. And now you, you have this cat who is a predator and other predators who come out in the community. And what we do, we end up focusing on the victim. So we tell the girls, don't wear this. Don't sit on Uncle Gus's lap. Don't do, you know, instead of, who's talking to the young brothers and saying, hey, don't grow up and be a predator. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't right. treat a woman this way. Right. Don't step out that way. But we spend so much time, it's, you know, you see the, the guys that, that come up, first thing out of their mouth is, all them girls are lying. Mm-hmm. You know, and all this, wait a minute, hold on. I mean, it's, this is that whole, that, that, that rape culture that exists, you know, right. and, and to seduce people's minds to the point where you begin to blame the victim immediately exactly. without anything else. And again, then it cuts back into that celebrity piece. It cuts back into the point, well, this dude, he has enough money to change my situation. Right, right. So, some of them may even be pimping their children in some ways. And, you know, it, it's crazy, but, you know, this is, this is the kind of society that we're in, and we've got to get back to the place where we become the protectors in the community, that you don't stand for that. You know, when you go into the barbershops and things like that, people know what's going on. Absolutely. People know who's doing what. Absolutely. You know, and so, so I think we have to get back to the place where we, we start taking care of all children as our children. And that's great. And my thing is, I'll, I'll say this, me being from Chicago, the streets knew R. Kelly and, and, and what he was on. The streets knew, just like in our families. We know Uncle Bobby has a sex problem. And so yep. we yep. try to adjust right. the children to accommodate Uncle Bobby's problem instead of challenging Uncle Bobby to get some help. And yep. that's what you were saying, Thin Bad. We that's don't. Right. We, 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 we help people to adapt to an environment and cause them to change. However, it's the predators that need to change. But we knew what R. Kelly was on. But but there is a status, I believe, in society to today that people reach that we feel that they're untouchable. And that's not fair. It's not fair. Um, and it goes we back. Tell children, we tell children. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we tell children early. We teach children early that it's that it's okay for someone to to touch your body, you know, whether whether it's something as simple as tickling or or pinching your cheek yep. or something. You know, I couldn't stand to have my cheek pinched, you know, but but your parents <laughs> right. say, that's okay. They don't mean anything that's right. by it. They don't mean that's nothing right. by it. Oh, it's just a love tap when they tap you on the but you know, that's right. you know, whoa, whoa, you in, you are invading my body and you are teaching there me that we there go. are times when it's okay for me to let someone older than me touch my body when I don't want them to touch. Yeah, see, and that's it right there. And so it's like he's trying to see how far he can go to get you used to being touched. And the next thing you know, he's touching you in improper places. And so, I mean, I, I right. believe that it's a training and it is literally designed to devalue a people, um, to humiliate us to, to the point 
where we have no self-confidence and we tolerate and accept any behavior that comes to us. R. Kelly is, listen, he is, he is, he, he is one out of a million individuals. These young ladies that c- came forward, there are so many who have not come forward. And I believe it is a movement that we can learn from and begin to share with our daughters in a greater way that they do not have to subscribe and acquiesce to this type of behavior. Exactly. And, and also, let me just remind our, our audience, uh, please call us at 702-425-7789. 702-425-7789 and of course you're able to chat live with us because we definitely want to hear what your thoughts are about this subject and you know Pastor C you you and um, Finbad made a good point <laughs> well I think we have a caller <laughs> somebody call her <laughs> that scared you huh Andesa Brother engineer is going to scare me too. <laughs> right. I'm like, oh. All right, then. That's not Gabriel blowing his horn, is he? I don't know oh, what's okay. going on. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, I sure hope not. I ain't ready. I ain't yeah, ready. So, I, I'm not so ready. So, anyway, let, let's, let's get our call in since they want to call. <laughs> call you. Call you. Call you live. <laughs> yes, call you. You're live with Thin Bad, Pastor C. Our guest, Kevin Powell and Ann Beasy. Call her. Oh, I guess the call is... Call her's okay. Gone. But anyway, you know, people... Um, call her. Call us back, please. We have some te- technical difficulties. People used difficult. to really make jokes about in, in, inappropriate um, information and, and, and touching. Remember, people used to tell you, hey, man, you up there with Junior? You letting Junior around those kids? Exactly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's not funny though, because Junior was on something then. They knew Junior was crazy. Yeah, they yeah. did, and they knew that they they were aware that Junior had a problem. And so, that's my thing, guys. Why do we, in society today, cause the victim to adjust to a predatory environment instead of challenging the predator and getting them some help? Hmm. Does that make sense at all, or am I by myself? No, I don't think you're by yourself no, you're at all. Right on. I don't think you're right at all. Uh, no, I, th- I think um, I, I think you you, but I think all of us are just kind of puzzled that this could have been going on for so long, and it just seems this guy's been skating for years, just just destroying lives. I'm not puzzled that this has happened. Mm. I'm puzzled at the extent that it happened. So you know, as as you guys know, um, I am also very 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 familiar with the music industry and even though you know i'm just starting out and stuff but one of the things i i've already noticed is when it comes to these stars rappers singers whoever there there there's really no point in which these people question how old are you there's that's not really a thing even if you go on social media you have instagram famous girls who look that like they're 25, but they're really 14. Mm-hmm. But you have rappers. I mean, you, like the rapper 6ix9ine. The rapper 6ix9ine has already been under heat for messing with, like, a 14-year-old girl and stuff like that. So this stuff happens all the time in, in the entertainment industry. The only thing that shocked me was the extent that it was happening when it comes to him locking these girls in the house and, and cuffing them and starving them and all this stuff like that part was truly disturbing to me but the part about you know the idea of this celebrity messing with an underage girl did not surprise me at all well let's go to let's go to to what's happening in or what happened in white america and i'm not trying to be the racial guy to pull the race card however hugh hefner had been doing that stuff for years yep in, in terms of having young ladies living with him and it was okay um, and, and I'm not condoning it at all. Um, and he has never been brought up in, on in any charges or anything like that. Um, but when you look at what is happening, it is it is literally in society today okay to have a plethora of women, whether they be young or old, in your camp. There are so many, not just celebrities, but men who think that pimping, excuse me for, for using that terminology, that pimping is okay. 
We, mm. we, we hear it in our songs or whatever, how you play on the women, how you play on young ladies and mm-hmm. get their mind and stuff like that. And it is literally being marketed today mm-hmm. that it is, it, it is okay and it's cool. You got swag. 